Good evening from Wembley Arena. Alan Minter tonight defends the middleweight championship of the world and Minter is the only undisputed boxing champion in the entire world. And coming to the ring is the man from whom Minter took it and who will try to get it back tonight, the Italian-American Vito Antuofermo, 28 years old, who Minter beat in Las Vegas earlier this year, overwhelmingly on points. And a packed Wembley tonight to see this middleweight championship. Minter, one of only three British middleweights post-war who've won the world middleweight title. Terry Downs was one of them. He's here tonight to see this fight. And the other was the late lamented Randolph Turpin. The challenger, Antua Fermo, enters the ring. enters it to an extremely lukewarm reception. And now the crowd wait for Minter. The banners move and Minter comes behind them. exhibitions of patriotic fervor that I have ever experienced in a British ring. Minter can hardly get to the ring for the thousands of people barring his way, most of them wanting to tap him on the back and wish him good luck. of the night that John Stracy was here and won the world welterweight title. The whole place exploding with patriotism. His world championship belt just being removed from around his waist. That's what he brought back from Las Vegas when he beat Antua Ferma there in March. So now we're all set for the return between the 28-year-old Southpaw Alan Minter and the 28-year-old orthodox, well, he's not quite orthodox because this man is a rugged brawler and he's got marks all round his eyes, the relics of previous battles. Seldom can Wembley Arena have held such expectancy from any British fighter. statistic overriding this fight. No British boxer has ever won two successive fights as the world middleweight champion. But Minter tonight intends to break the Udo. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the main event of the evening. This is a contest 
of 15 rounds, three minutes each round to decide the middleweight championship of the world, sponsored by Daft Trucks, presenting from Crawley, England, the champion. And at the weigh-in today, Minter scaled 11 stone 6 pounds. Anchor Fermo, 11 stone 5 and a quarter pounds. Your referee for this contest is Mr. Octavio Mayran of Mexico. Your judges, Mr. Kurt Halbeck from Germany and Mr. Jan Desworth from Belgium. Your timekeeper, Mr. Tom Powell. And this place doesn't accord and to a fermo a chance. Considerably shorter than Minter, as you can see. And the two can hardly wait to get at each other. And to a fermo comes storming in just the way he said he would. He said he was going to make it rough for Minter tonight. Minter in Las Vegas fought a carefully controlled fight, boxed his way carefully, picked up points all the way through and kept out of trouble. The challenger and former champion Anto Afermo is by nature a brawler. Minter settles down and gets ready to plug the right hand, the Southpaw's lead, into the face of the Italian-American. And to a Fermo arrived in this country this week with a pair of dark glasses, hiding some marks around the eyes, He's been in Italy, he's been to Genoa and done some sparring there and clearly he'd picked up one or two marks during sparring and he wanted to hide them when he arrived in London. Minter's plan here will be to keep him on the end of that right hand. looking cut and Howie Albert is getting to work on it.
Well, what a start to the fight. The referee from Mexico, Octavio Mayran, is already looking at that cut. And it looks a dangerous one because it's in such a vulnerable place. And that was brought about by the left hand of Minter. He started spearing him with the right and then brought the left over and that started the injury. Seconds out, round two. Minter could hardly have had a better start. Minter's 45th professional fight tonight and to Afermo's 52nd. And they haven't stopped the bleeding. It started again. And to Afermo rubbing his head inside. And the blood must be running down into his eye. And he's going to have trouble seeing. But he's a brawler by nature. He's had a tough upbringing and he started as a street fighter. And he'll wade through anything. And he's bleeding very, very badly beginning to look like an extremely serious cut and he's cut the other side as well both eyes are now cut and to a famo his face is being ripped to pieces by Minter there's no way he'll get through this fight with eyes like that less than two rounds and he's torn to bits two very bad cuts His face now the same colour as his shorts. And he can't escape these punches of Minter. Minter's just hitting him any way he likes. It's a most clinical and extraordinary performance by Minter. He's tearing the man apart. Three streams of blood now running down the left-hand side of Antipofermo's face. And if this wasn't for the world title, I don't think Antipofermo would be there now. He'd be stopped already. He really is in an appalling state. It's an absolute piece of butchery. And there's so much noise they haven't heard the bell. And Antoine Fermo goes back for repairs that can hardly do any good at all. He's so badly cut. What can you do to patch up a man who's in that state? somehow but it can't be for long the way the man fights he brings trouble upon himself Minter's absolutely staring at him cold eyed he's determined to give him a lesson and the blood has started again on both sides. Minter looks twice as big and twice as efficient. Before he, 
became world middleweight champion, of course, and to Afirma was the European light middleweight champion and lost that title to Maurice Hope. <laughs> who now, of course, is the world light middleweight champion. And once again, the blood streams down the face of the Italian-American. And he walks into punches that rock his head from side to side. Minta sees him coming every time and hits him with one or two or three punches into that blood-stained face. He's made to measure from Minter, he really is. If you tried to design somebody who would suit Minter, then this would be the sort of fighter you'd design. night this must be for Minter who suffered so often from cuts himself in the ring now staring at a man who's got more trouble than Minter's ever had three overwhelming rounds for Winter how much longer can this man go through a fight cut like this the referee's coming back to have a look again and he's walked away quickly satisfied again what they're doing is they're just wiping the blood away, but they're not managing to staunch the flow of blood. This can only be a matter of time, surely. Howie Albert, this side, the big man working on the eyes, or on one of them anyway. Another peep by the referee. And in the corner of Minter, pure calm. Seconds out, round four. And to Afema, the son of an Italian farmer, born in southern Italy on the Adriatic coast emigrated to the United States and worked as a meat cutter there from the age of 16. The only meat being cut tonight is Andrew Fermo's. It's terrifying the way Minter slices those punches across the face of Andrew Fermo, worsening the damage. undisputed world middleweight championship co-promoted by Harry Levine and Mickey Duff here at Wembley Arena sponsored by Daft Trucks and providing a really sensational opening and bringing this crowd to its feet with excitement from time to time No way they can stop those cuts. It's impossible. And every time Andrew Firma moves close, he picks up two punches, a right and a left, slap in the face. It's almost ridiculously easy for Minter. The only way Minter could get beaten now is if he got his head badly caught in the clinches and started to get cut himself or if he got very careless indeed and stood for a sneak punch.
into a femo is now cut underneath the right eye as well as the two cuts above both eyes. The whole face seems to be disintegrating. This is altogether a more overwhelming performance from Minter than he did in Las Vegas. He always had command of the fight there, but he didn't make such a dramatic start tearing the man to bits. He hasn't lost a fight, Minter, since September 1977, when, oddly enough, he was stopped with a cut eye himself when he fought Gratian Tonner, the European champion abroad. He's won his last nine fights and they've included three British or European title fights and one world championship fight. He really has come good at the age of 28. His father-in-law, Doug Bidwell, standing in front of him, and Bobby Neal, who works with him in the corner on the left-hand side. Second foul, round five. like a bull. His ring hero was Jake LaMotta. I'm talking about Antwerp Fermo. And Jake LaMotta was known as the bull of the Bronx. And Antwerp Fermo clearly models himself on that style. But it's not getting him anywhere in this fight. said for the courage of Andrew Afema that he's come through those opening rounds cut as badly as he was and for the first time the corner have managed to do a little bit of successful work because although there's a little bit of blood about nothing like what there was a little bit now clearly trying to step it up again and the bleeding has started Winter totally in command he knows exactly what he's doing every move is planned he's got the man in his sights all the time and the cuts have opened up again of Andrew Femmer's is like a punch ball for Minter. And a playful tap now from Andrew Femmer, as much as to say, well, we got rid of all the needle before the fight, now it's just down to fighting, and there's a bit of respect on both sides. Second out, round six. So a third of the fight already gone. And Mint has won every round. It's often 
said that when a man becomes a world champion, he assumes almost an arrogance in the ring, a feeling of confidence. And you can certainly see it written all over Minter tonight. He knows he's the champion. He knows he beat this man well last time, and he knows he can beat him again. like a well-worn record, but Antwerp Fermo is bleeding again. And if anything, it looks a bit worse on the left-hand side now than it was before. with which to worry Minter at the moment. He comes barging in. Minter either spears him on the way in or slips inside the swings and punishes him there. Total domination by Minter. Well, what a night for British boxing this is turning out to be so far. And really now, Antwerp Fermo's face is in an awful state, and I don't really see the point now, or the humanity, in letting it go much further. He is bleeding all around his eyes, and it really is a horrible sight. And he shouldn't be allowed to undergo this sort of suffering even for a world title. He really is too badly cut for words. And this must, must be stopped. No way a man should be permitted to carry on, injured in the way he is. Six rounds gone now. And that left eye is far worse now than it was before. I don't know what they can do to stop that. And the fight goes on. Seconds out, round seven. said after the last fight that he felt he'd been hard done by, that the scoring hadn't been true to form, and that he didn't agree with the decision, and that he was coming to London this time to prove how wrong it all had been. I'm afraid he's proved nothing at all so far except his ability to soak up punishment and a lot of bravery to get through with cuts like this. Minter's almost talking to him. streaming down the left-hand side of Antwerp Fermo's face again. Well, I've seen a few thousand fights over the years, but I don't mind admitting this is beginning to turn my stomach a bit. It's too much blood. It's ridiculously one-sided. Minter's won every round. the man's face to bits. It really is too bad. Seventh round. I don't really know 
how much more Antoine Fermat has to take. Well, I am relieved about that. And I make it one minute, 50 seconds of the seventh round. Antoine Fermat has been taken to his corner. And Dr. Whiteson of the British Boxing Board is looking at it. And it is not stopped, it's going on. Dr. Whiteson gave the signal for the fight to continue. Despite the fact that he has cuts on both sides of his face. And Minter's going to go on and punish him a bit more. streaming blood yet again. Well, this really is savagery beyond all measure. And the bell has gone to end the seventh round. And Minter is an overwhelming winner. After seven rounds, he hasn't lost a round. A long, long way ahead, and the fight is still apparently going on. And it's being allowed to go so far now that it's liable to give boxing a bad name. Referees in there investigating again. And the referee has left the corner. And we're going on into the eighth. And now the cuts are so bad that he's come out of the corner with blood still oozing from the eyes. the word for it. Minter is being permitted to cut the man to bits. None of it Minter's fault. He's doing his job. We're in the eighth round. And I suppose you could count on the fingers of one hand the number of reasonably good punches that Anto Fermo has landed. He's brawled a lot, he's wrestled a lot, he's barged in. Punches have gone round the back of Minter's waist, round his shoulders, round his neck. Very few of them have been on the target area. man from Brooklyn by Italy and to a fermo keeps on coming in trying to do something but unless he gets very very lucky it looks like a hopeless quest his eyebrow 
over the left eye. Looks like just one long cut to me. Once again, he trudges back to the corner and once again, Howie Albert goes to work pouring water over those damaged eyes. And they're calling the referee over this time, and this might be the end. They are calling it off. They can't continue. And that's not before time. So at the end of the eighth round, Alan Minter, leaping for joy, retains the World Middleweight Championship, the undisputed championship of the world, the only undisputed world boxing champion there is. Alan Minter from Crawley in Sussex, at 28, retains the title in a fight that has been extraordinary in many ways for the complete domination by Minter and for the extraordinary length to which Antua, Antua Fermer was permitted to go trying to win his title back. And everywhere that Minter goes now, from side to side of the ring, he's greeted with a great burst of cheering. Well, that's an historic win because Minter becomes the first British boxer ever to win two successive fights as world middleweight champion. Terry Downs lost it in his first defense and so did Randolph Turkin. And so did Dick Tiger, who came from Nigeria but became one of ours. Scenes of jubilation everywhere in the British camp. And Antwerp Fermo comes over now. At the end of the have a word with Minter. Round, the winner and acknowledge presumably that Minter of the is the true world champion. Look at the way that Andrew Fermo's face is patched up now already. What a sight he is. Well, that was one of the most complete and decisive victories in a world title fight ever seen in this country by a British fighter. There never was any doubt about it from the moment the first bell went.